Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another action camera review. Today we are going to take a look at the Andoir uh, action camera. Uh, what I must say in the beginning about this model is uh, that it shoots real 4K. It does not do interpolated video like most action cameras and this will also do 120 frames per second in full HD or up to 240 frames per second in HD resolution which means uh, 720p uh, this is uh, actually very good for doing uh, slow motion videos and uh, you have a lot of editing options by using those frame rates uh, as you can see the box is kind of weird it, there's no indications no specifications nothing it's just a label here with and a year and uh, that's all uh, what it's also nice about this model is that uh, it uses a common uh, technical platform which is used on several other action cameras with the same specifications and you can uh, cross uh, use the firmware with other models which is very nice uh, you do get specifications like this uh, but they are in German because this camera was bought from a nice seller uh, which has a warehouse in Germany, it will ship it very fast to the whole Europe and it will come with no customs, with no other taxes, nothing and will uh, get to be delivered at your doorsteps you won't, go to, you won't have to go to the post office for it, which is very nice I'm going to add a link to that seller in the video description below where you can find this camera at a very good price for its video quality and options so let's move on to the review. So the camera comes in its waterproof case, as you can see it. Hopefully it has enough battery to run. And yes, it does have battery. So I'm going to shut it off for now to save battery power. And let's see what else we get in the box. So we get another smaller box. And here we should get some accessories. And we start with the manual, which is good. We have some pictures, basic operation, and we do have full specifications, which is very nice. It even specifies the image sensor of the camera, which is a Sony IMX117. This has 12.4 megapixels. It's a very good image sensor. And we get all the picture resolution, video resolution, and so on. It supports multiple languages, so definitely a good all-rounder camera. So inside the box we get zip ties, pivots, a monopod or a tripod mount, selfie, stick mount, a micro USB cable, quick adhesive pads, more quick release adapters, a bike handlebar adapter, a second door for the waterproof case with holes in it for shooting with audio and still providing some uh, protection to the camera but it's not waterproof, additional pads and a metal uh, strap for securing the camera, microfiber cloth and some velcro ties and a buckle tie so you can see it has a pretty good bundle especially for its price uh, you can get almost the same camera which is the TI T5 they are both looking almost identical they both have the same specifications they both use the same hardware the only difference is uh, its firmware but you can Use the firmware from the Andoir to the TI and uh, also the same applies reversed. You can use the TI firmware on this. You can see the design looks similar with these two LEDs here. The two side buttons, the top button, the microphone holes. And you can see here the placing of the micro SD card. It has micro USB interface and uh, micro HDMI, they both have the same mount here, they both use the same locking latching 
battery cover and the same battery of course so what is uh, different about them is actually the bundle the ti costs around 120 130 dollars you can get it at a promotional price sometimes around 110 115 but this is not far from that it's just a bit more expensive like 120 130 dollars but you get all this bundle while the ti only comes with the waterproof case and a single uh, quick release mount like this and that's all no other accessories this comes much with much much more included which is much better and it comes with customs free so definitely a better alternative to the ti so let's move on with the camera i'm going to start it zoom in and uh, we should take a quick look into the menu to see what options it provides i'm going to push the menu button once and now it goes to photo mode and playback mode and playback mode for photos and now we're in the camera setup menu so first thing is the resolution we have full real 4k resolution we have super view mode we have as you can see multiple resolutions and we can even shoot uh, 2.5k resolution at 60 frames per second which is very nice this is uh, currently my recommended resolution because it's double the frame rate of uh, 4k and it's uh, a resolution bigger than full hd so you have room for editing like uh, stabilizing video or cropping zooming and still keeping it uh, over full hd quality and having 60 frames per second uh, 4k at 30 frames per second is not very good for action videos but 60 frames per second it's better for that you can see you have a lot of choices here including full hd at 60 frames per second 30 frames per second and 120 frames per second which is rather impressive and the same applies for hd resolution where you can go up to 20 uh, 1040p frames per second you of course have uh, PAL uh, resolutions um, frame rate you have uh, 50 frames per second 20 hundred frames per second so multiples of uh, 25 so the camera provides a lot of options regarding the resolution photo size you have uh, this is actually the real resolution of the sensor and you have some options like uh, interpolated resolution these two but this is the real resolution you can use that with no quality loss video quality we have uh, three presets here and they influence the video bitrate so super fine takes bigger files but preserves quality better the same applies for photo quality default mode is a mode that uh, the camera will enter when it's powered on so if it's record mode it will go into video recording mode it is photo mode each time when you power on the camera it will go to photo mode so you won't need to change it quick capture you can enable that when you power on the camera using a shutter button or something like that it will automatically also start to record electronic image stabilization which i cannot select right now works for lower resolutions like uh, full hd and uh, it will provide some image stabilization this is electronic image stabilization it's not something fancy like optical image stabilization but will uh, take uh, some shake out of the videos so it's good to use uh, when you are using uh, lower resolution but for 4k i highly recommend you to use uh, gimbal a proper way to stabilize the video motion detection it will turn uh, camera recording when uh, it detects movement in front of the lens long exposure mode uh, will enable you to do night photography or uh, some spectacular effects like uh, uh, photographing a waterfall uh, with uh, some uh, filters in front of the camera and you can uh, capture the movement of the water in one single photograph so you can do pictures of the stars and so on a very useful option dual files uh, will uh, make a second low resolution and bitrate video file 
that is useful for using it with your mobile devices. Video stamp and photo stamp will add time and date over your recordings or photographs. Time lapse video, you know what that is, it will do uh, an accelerated video by using one frame per second and then uh, multiplying that to 30 frames per second so one second it, it will be uh, 30 times faster and so on loop recording is useful for using the camera on your car uh, it will do a video splitting of your files uh, each time when uh, it reaches uh, the interval here it will stop the recording of that file and start another file it's also useful uh, when doing action videos because if your camera will uh, crash or uh, your uh, battery will run out it will not corrupt the whole video file but only the last segment of the video which cannot be more than one minute or two minutes or three minutes it's a very useful feature to use the self timer is for taking of course a recording after a predetermined interval. Photo Bosch is for taking multiple pictures when you press the shutter button you can go up to 10 photos per second which is very good. Timeless photo uses the same uh, uh, principle as video lapse but this takes repeated photographs and you can edit them into a video. The advantage of using timeless photo is that you can use higher resolution that uh, uh, video Labs provides. Auto DVR is for automatically starting the camera when it detects power. Delay off is for automatically turning the camera off when you unplug power from it. Post are very useful when using the camera on your car. A TV mode is for selecting uh, the protocol of your television. This will also influence the frame rate as NTSC will support 60 frames per second uh, power resolution is uh, uh, 50 frames per second or of course half of them 25 and respectively 30 frames per second light frequency is for cancelling flickering in your country on screen display uh, displays useful stuff like battery remaining memory space and so on auto shut down when the camera is idle it will turn off after a predetermined interval screen off is for turning off the screen of the camera when it's not in use or when it's idle or after a predetermined period of time for example the camera is recording and you have it somewhere like on uh, your uh, car like a dash camera it will turn off the screen but the camera will keep running so this will not only save power but will also make the camera to run a bit more cooler because the screen will not be lit up and will not produce heat status led is for selecting how many leds are going to be lit up and you can see the camera has two in front one on top one here and one here so you can control some of them Wi-Fi LED if you want to disable that also TV out you can enable or disable it when you are connecting the camera the beep sound of the menu when you are pushing buttons you have an option to set microphone volume sharpness for video white balance settings exposure value settings you also get scene mode like flash, night, sports, landscape will be interesting to test those to see if they have any kind of effect you get some also effect mode like art sepia negative black and white sensitivity of the image sensor you can go low to uh, 100 and this is very nice to be used in combination with long time photography you also get metering modes like center multi and spot very useful course you can set the time the date you can select the language and Bluetooth pair is very interesting you can use a Bluetooth remote controller with this and it doesn't have to come from the producer you can use the one from Xiaomi 
uh, e-camera, e1 or e2, they are all the same. They will work with this camera, also they will work with the T5 camera. Wi-Fi settings for setting a wireless network between the camera and your phone, so you can download the file from the camera or control the camera remotely from your phone. You can format the SD card, you can reset the settings to default, and this is the firmware version that is on this camera model. I'm now going to do a quick uh, Wi-Fi operation demo. So I have turned on the Wi-Fi on the camera. You can do that by long pressing the shutter button. And I have also installed the application. It's called Andoir. It's free from the market. I have already made a connection between the phone and the camera. Default password is 1234567890. And I have connection between them. The application should connect to the camera. I'm going to click connect. And hopefully this should work. And it seems to work. Alright, so we got a basic screen here. Let's see if it works in landscape. Nope, it will stay that mode. So it shows the resolution. You can see the image is moving. It has a bit of lag, but it's normal. So we get a battery indicator here that shows that it's empty, which it's almost true. We have settings menu, and here we have some settings that we can change, which is very nice. Uh, we have video, video quality, video stamp, so the most useful settings are here. And of course you can also manage the SD card, which is very good. We get a low battery warning, and that's true. We have a gallery mode. We have settings here, uh, very nice, we have uh, quick settings for loop record, photo, and so on, self timer, and this button lets see what this does, so this is for the gallery, I have no recordings on the camera, which is true, we get a signal indicator, and can I switch the mode from photo to oh, from here, probably, so it's video, I can select photo, yes, it will change into photo mode so if I press it button it has taken a picture and now probably yes it will appear also in the gallery and you can browse it directly from the camera or you have an option to download it so basic application basic operation but useful buttons has the right places you can quickly change the modes application works uh, I will also check the TI application, which has received currently some updates and should be a bit better. And if I press on connect, it connects with no problem. So the TI application also works. It has detected that the camera has remained in photo mode. I'm going to turn off the, this lamp. Maybe you can see better. And from the settings, you have the settings menu here. You have more settings, all of them should work because it's the same chipset, the same camera, similar firmware, even the low battery alarm works, so that is fine. You can see battery indication, signal indication work. You can switch the mouse from here, HD video, just one press, and now I'm back in video mode, press shutter button, the camera is now recording, press stop button, camera has stopped recording, so this app also works fine. So this was the first part of my review uh, of the Android camera. Uh, I will shortly prepare the second part with uh, video footage taken with uh, this camera. Uh, there is going to be a difference between these two models, although they use the same exact hardware. The Android has uh, a firmware which permits a uh, higher data rate for uh, video or also called bitrate, while the TI is more economical with the space. It will compress the video files more and lose a bit of uh, quality. This will preserve the quality better of the recordings. Also the Android has uh, that uh, slow shutter speed setting, uh, long exposure time, uh, while on the TI it's completely missing. So uh, actually, it's better to put, if you have a TI, to put the Android firmware on the TI because you have more 
features and uh, better image quality. So I'm going to let it stock for now. I'm not going to tinker with upgrading and changing the firmware because there are other cameras that use the same uh, platform. I'm just going to let it stock like a regular user and uh, capture some uh, video footage with it in different situations uh, with different resolutions and I'm going to specify uh, each uh, time the settings and uh, uh, the camera features that were enabled or disabled at that uh, time. So until next time, see you, bye bye.